Welcome, welcome. Hi, welcome. Welcome to Coast to Coast. My name is Lily Weinberg. I'm here joined by my colleague, Raul Moaz. How's it going, Raul? Hello, hello. Doing well yourself? Doing well. Um, so we are on month six of this pandemic. Is that how far along we are? And it only feels like year six. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, as you know, the, the purpose of, of Coast to Coast is really to look at, you know, how our communities are changing during this really dynamic time. Um, we've looked at all sorts of topics um, from from how public spaces can be leveraged during pandemics um, to mobility. Um, we really did a deep dive um, during the, the racial reckoning that's occurring in our country. And, and so we've, we've, we've looked at all different types of topics. Um, of course, uh, we have something really major going on in November. Um, <laughs> as you know, we have an election and um, it's only, um, completely um, obvious that we should be doing some, um, we should be examining uh, voting and uh, civic engagement, which is really Knight Foundation's uh, North Star. Um, so I'm really excited about our topic today. Um, and could you tell us a bit about what we're gonna chat about? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's exactly right. Uh, in, in some ways, um, I think the election uh, has gotten swooped up in the fact that there is a public health crisis and, and yeah. there's so much happening in our country uh, this year. Um, but it is less than 30 days away. Uh, and, and so I think to your point about talking about like the trends that are that are effectuating uh, the lives of cities and, and communities, one of the things that 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 we picked up on and we wanted to, to, to dive into today was how do these different kind of tensions and trends around civic participation manifest, right? Yeah. And in, in the context of engaging communities and promoting uh, civic participation, voter turnout particularly, uh, where it seems to be periods of, of rather high distrust, lack yeah. of trust in the institutions of this country, we're also seeing uh, a lot of engagement on the civic front uh, in terms of, 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 of folks demanding racial equity of folks um, in, in locally in Miami, for example, in August, we had record turnout for the, the primary. And so there's these, these, these different indicators that tell us uh, different things about the health of our democracy uh, yeah. and the health of civic participation and engagement. And so for that, we wanted to invite uh, Joanne Godoy, who is the executive director of Radical Partners uh, and a dear friend of ours, uh, to join us in conversation. Uh, she's leading some really fascinating work uh, around a project called Vote Miami. You can check it out at votemiami.org.org. And we wanted her to give us her insights and her learnings from what can, can, can other communities around the country learn uh, about civic engagement in times of, of disruption, in times of, of turmoil, uh, that, that might help kind of get us through this, right? That might be exactly the medicine we need yeah. to get us through this uh, process. So investing in our democracy, investing in voter uh, participation to get us through the noise uh, and, and the challenges that we're living through today. So with that, uh, Joanne, thank you so much for, for joining us and being with us today. Oh, Thanks thank for being you so with much us, for the invitation, Vivian. I'm very excited. Fantastic. Well, I'll see you guys in 15 minutes or so. Okay. Bye. See you in a bit. And so uh, as Lily alluded, uh, Joanne and I are going to go back and forth for a bit just to, to kind of set the scene and, and set the table. Um, as with other Coast to Coast episodes, we really uh, are, are predicated on, it's all predicated on your involvement. And so if you have any questions uh, for Joanne, uh, please feel free uh, to drop them. You can either drop them right here into the Q&A uh, feature within uh, the, the chat uh, or on Facebook uh, or Twitter uh, using the hashtag night live and our team will, will uh, scrape them together and we'll put them uh, to, to Joanne uh, at the end. So we'll do about 10, 15 minutes of Q&A towards the end. 
Um, Joanne, welcome. Really good to see you. Um, and, and glad that you're, you're, you're doing well and able to spend this time with us. Could you give us a quick kind of overview of, of Radical Partners and then more specifically, what is Vote Miami and how did it come about? Yeah, totally happy to. Um, thank you again, Raul. So Radical Partners um, is a Miami-based social impact accelerator. So for those of you who are familiar with the business concept, right, we kind of take it and own it so that we can not only identify who's already doing and leading social impact initiatives in town, but also scale their impact and, and make it grow, right? So, so we have three pillars of work. One is that we invest in leaders. Two is that we activate and engage locals, which we're gonna be talking more about today. And the third thing is that we try to design innovative solutions to solve and collectively confront, I would say, the issues that we all care about. So in those lines of work, we have several programs, including Vote Miami, which is the one that we're gonna be talking to, uh, about today. Um, and this is basically an initiative that started a year ago um, thanks to, to the support of, of Knight, actually, and in partnership with the Miami Herald and, and the Miami Foundation as well. And the idea was, how can we make it easy and accessible for everybody to not only care about voting, but doing something about it? Um, so that's how, how the platform was born. And back then, it was an online assemblage of tools that people could, could use to register, learn, and mobilize. And this year, it has grown to be so much more, right? Um, but I'm, I'm going to pause there because I'm sure we're going to dive in uh, later on. Yeah, I, I, love, um, I love the way you kind of describe what Radical Partners does, investing in people, investing in ideas, nurturing them. Um, all of that happens within a context. All that happens within a current setting. Could you give us a, a bit about kind of the relief, the background against which you're, you're, you're doing this work in Vote Miami? Tell us what you all kind of assumed or saw uh, or concluded about Miami that led you to this point uh, to, to say we need this kind of, of, of kind of aggregation of resources and tools and, and then how you kind of designed Vote Miami in response to that? Yeah, happy to. So I think there's nothing new uh, when one looks at the numbers, right? Miami uh, unfortunately has one of the lowest turnouts uh, when you compare it to other cities in, in the world. So, so we started digging like what, what is happening? Why is this happening? Um, and we found certain trends, right? One of them is that for those of them who care about civic engagement and voting already, it is hard and it's time consuming for you to understand what is happening when, where should I go, where should I register? So even if you're interested, it takes you a while to navigate a system that it, it might be built with good intentions, but it's archaic in a way. So you have to navigate a lot of websites, calls, etc. So it takes time. Um, so that was one. And then the second one is there are some people that do not care, right? And I, you and I have talked about this, Raul. Miami, in the end, is one of the cities that has more foreign-based locals. So we all come, uh, including myself, with some traumas of what we've dealt in our countries, what, how we perceive democracies, et cetera. So uh, we are kind of like disenfranchised and lost hope in those systems, um, which has led us to, to not really care or to not really have hope that our, our vote and our voice matters. And the third one is that some people really don't know right? Like some people that have two or three jobs, having to take care of dogs and kids, etc. Like they just do not have the time yeah. uh, or the brain space uh, to care and learn about all these things. I think that you're, you're hitting on, on this concept that we touched on before, the multiple Miamis, right? That from the outside, I think a lot of folks, especially from the American kind of worldview, would say that Miami is very diverse and that it has a very strong uh, Latino community or, or what have you, but when you get really close uh, to Miami, you realize it's, it's, it's 10,000 shades of gray in some ways, and there's nuance to the nuance to the nuance. Um, and so I, I'm curious in terms of, of advice that you might be able to impart on other folks um, in, in other communities across the country, how should we be thinking of meeting people where they're at? In Miami, it's, it's really the multiple Miamis, and it's meeting each of those communities that you just beautifully kind of delineated, meeting them where they're at in terms of what do you need to further your engagement. So what, what are basic concepts or, or, or precepts that, that you found in the work thus far that others uh, in, in other cities could say, all right, we really gotta get, get nuanced. We gotta meet the customer where they're at. We should follow these, these principles when designing a, an intervention around civic participation and voter engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, so many things to share there, right? But, but I think the first thing that we all not only could, but have to do is, is to really do some research, right? And try to understand 
what is our community and what do our communities look like, right? So, so in Miami, yes, we have the high rises. Yes, we have the yacht clubs and the golf clubs, uh, but we also have uh, the lowest salaries in, in the countries. So it's understanding how Miami fits in um, when you compare it to the United States, but also understanding what Miami looks like for the Latin American country and, and uh, countries and how we're kind of like stuck in the middle of these several realities. So, so that's definitely the one thing that you need to do, zoom in to understand who's living in your cities, where are they, what are they um, looking towards, um, and also wh where are they having these conversations, right? So once you understand who's out there is what is it that they're doing, what do they care about, and where are they having these conversations? And I think that's a very important thing that, that Bo Miami tries to fill the gap in terms of, yes, there are plenty of conversations out there. Yes, there are plenty of platforms. The reality is that it's hard to understand roles. So Vote Miami is, how can we make it simple uh, in plain English and Spanish and Creole um, to make sure that people can access the information um, in whatever level they have, right? So, so access is definitely a thing and that might look different um, in each city. And the third thing is, how do we make it a 2020 thing, right? Like how can we just make it modern and exciting and celebratory just like it was a hundred of years ago uh, to make sure that we're all not only keen to engage, but actually acting and doing something about it. I think it's such an interesting kind of, uh, that's such an interesting point that we don't really talk about. Like I think um, engagement, voter participation today is definitely being, has been absolutely politicized uh, on, on, on our fronts. Um, and there's this kind of really this huge moral imperative. I, I think fewer and fewer folks in, in this election cycle have, have spoken about kind of the excitement of voting from an optimistic perspective necessarily, um, because we were living in, in times of such massive change and disruption. And, and so I'm, I'm curious about, um, about this, 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 this element of, of, of kind of emotion, right? Like of, of, of sentiment. Um, and, and sentiment, again, might mean different things for different folks. Um, what, what, are you, what are you seeing? What, what sort of sentiments and emotions are you trying to tap into uh, to kind of really kind of coax folks to, to step up or, or to be more active? Uh, whether, and, and, and whether that's voting or if you're not able to vote um, because you're, you're not a citizen, engaging in civic participation in a different way. Are, are there certain sentiments? Is it, a, is, it a, is it an emotional kind of response? Is it a call to, to, to kind of responsibility? What sentiments are we, ta are we using to, to get folks kind of in, in, in the door, so to speak? So I would say that's kind of like the, the, the MO at, at Radical Partners and we try to replicate it with Bo Miami. And one of the sentiments is collaboration. Right? How how can we uh, make everybody believe that this is this is a thing of everybody? Right? So so Vote Miami is not the only movement definitely here. So instead of competing with other organizations who are definitely registering folks that are uh, mobilizing leaders around as a certain issue, instead of competing with them, we try to leverage what they're doing and uplifting the work that you that you're doing. So in, in a tangible way, that means either having public dialogues on social media. That means sharing sharing their content, uh, using their content, adding it to the Vote Miami website uh, so that we can create like this, this family and the celebratory sentiment um, towards, towards what we're doing. And the second one role is, is how do we make everybody own this and, and be excited about this. So if you, if you look at our social, if you look at our content, it's not about like Radical Partners here, Vote Miami here is, look, stop scrolling. We just want you today to take the census and, and register to vote. And what we want is for people to look at that image, say like, oh, this is so cool. I want to share with my friends and family so that they make it their own and they make it their own thing. So definitely nonpartisanship is key. We're not pushing for any candidates for anything. We just want whomever is watching and reading to own this and to understand that this is their process too. This is their city too. Totally. Um, one uh, particularly kind of noxious uh, and, and toxic element, I think, of our reality today is mis and disinformation. And so folks uh, using um, technology and platforms uh, to, to spread information that's intentionally meant uh, to, to keep folks out of the democratic process, to keep folks away uh, from participating, whether that's in the census or in, in an election or what have you. Could you give us a, a bit of, of, of context in terms of how you all have approached uh, this, this, this challenge of mis and disinformation? Again, we're, I think we're dealing against the, the relief of, of massive distrust, right? In, in polling at night and others have done, 
uh, trust in American institutions is at its lowest level since the Vietnam War. Um, and, and mis and disinformation have definitely contributed to that. And so with that kind of reality in, 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 in play, how do we kind of, how do we manage, how do we build, how do we design interventions that, that, that navigate around that? Mm -hmm. So I, I go back to what we, you and I were discussing earlier, like it, it's all about listening, right? Uh, and instead of ignoring or fighting that, how can you join those movements and, and meet people where they are? So for the census, for example, we know there are many organizations doing significant efforts to get people out and, 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 and take the, the census. So yes, we uplift and we try to enhance and, and that message, but the reality is that people who aren't US citizens or who do not have papers in, in this country are afraid of that, right? So instead of fighting it and just pushing more, of, more and more of those PSAs and typical messages, how can we then create something simpler? How do we can hop on the, on the phone? How can we send text messages and find people in their communities that they trust more than us to tell them what this is about and why this matters, et cetera. So in the end, it goes back to active listening um, and leveraging those movements and those fears and that this information and tackling it with something that they already trust and that they're already listening to. I'd, I'd love to kind of, before we hand this off to, to, to the Q&A portion, I'd love to do two things. One is invite everyone who's, who's joining us today live uh, to drop your question either on Facebook or Twitter using the hashtag nightlive or right here into the chat on the Q&A uh, feature. You can uh, pop your question in there and, and we'll kind of uh, bring them to the forefront. Um, jo Joanne, I'd love to uh, kind of, if you will, kind of, as we transition, uh, transition kind of on a, on a more optimistic note, if you will, and, and that is to say kind of, there's also opportunity, right? I think there's a mass amount of disruption. disruption. Um, there is uh, kind of, at this moment in time, uh, the calls to our, to our conscience, collective conscience as, as individuals, but collective conscience as communities and, and as a nation are, are, are deeper than, than in recent memory, both around economic uh, uh, kind of justice and, and inequality as a result of, of the pandemic, racial inequality and justice um, that has been kind of uh, part of America's uh, fabric for, for forever. Um, those are all really large and big um, and heavy kind of things that to confront. And they're changing the way that we even get together, right? We're having this conversation in this format because of some of that. Um, that kind of disruption also brings about opportunity. It, it brings about renewal and creation um, and, and, and new beginnings. And so I'm curious what opportunities you're seeing, right? What, what gives you reason for hope? What gives you kind of cautious optimism that out of what's happening right now in our communities, and be it in Miami or nationally, we're designing, building something better, a better democracy, a better sense of, of attachment to place, a better sense of solidarity and camaraderie. What are the things that you're seeing that, say, that give you kind of at Radical Partners uh, a, a kind of a guiding light to say there's opportunity in this direction? Oh, I, I love that question. I always say I'm a, an idealist by choice, right? Despite all the news and despite all the things that we see, I choose to stay optimistic and, and do something about it. So whomever is watching, I encourage you to do the same. And um, the, the, some of the opportunities that I see, Raul, is as you were saying, there was chaos, right? And chaos has a negative connotation, but chaos means change. Um, and every time something clashes, we have an opportunity to transform things. Um, and there was chaos, not only in this country, but in the world this year. Um, so one of the things that I think we, we can transform is who is holding those positions of power? What are the conversations that we're having? And how can we make decisions moving forward? Um, and to give specific examples, we are seeing models that were old and worked centuries ago, decades ago. Uh, and and kind of like those platforms and those processes continue to be, but then we're also seeing a large movement of younger generations taking the streets right and, and wanting change so i'm starting to see this two generations these these two groups willing to talk to each other because now the older folks who have been in those positions and these these processes understand the relevance and the 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 activation and the energy that the younger people can can bring but then the younger folks are realizing that if they don't permeate if that's a word in english uh the structures that the change is not going to be sustainable so mm -hmm. so that's definitely one uh, the second one, and, and I think it's, it's especially relevant for this country, is 
technology, right? And yeah. how we can democratize uh, knowledge because technology exists and um, use it to our advantage. Just as we're seeing many negative messages, we could use it to our advantage and organize people in a click, with a click. We could do it very, very fast. Um, and then the third one is that uh, there's been this opportunity to just humanize ourselves mm -hmm. again. Uh, you and I have talked about this before, um, and it, it might sound cheesy for some, but it's like in, in years like this, we realize that sometimes we just need to bet on connections, that we need to bet on relationships, that we need to bet on people, even if we can measure the impact, even if uh, the, the money might not be there. It, it just reminded us that 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 human solidarity and doing something in community about the things that we care about might be the best uh, way to go. I love that you kind of uh, brought that point and elevated that point up. Um, a lot of talk about systems change uh, these days, um, rightly so, fairly so, uh, can absolutely imagine a renewal and a redesign of the systems that we have in our communities, in our country, for the times that we live in. Um, but systems ultimately kind of live or die and succeed or fail based on the people that, 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 that inhabit them and that use them. And so that, that, that conversion that you're talking about, that, that renewal that you're having at community that's people to people, that's critical, critical mm -hmm. to, to what we're talking about here. I'd love to bring Lily back into the conversation. Lily has been uh, screening uh, yeah. uh, the questions, fielding the questions from, from a lot of folks, and we've got a, a good number stacked up. So we're going to try to get to yeah. as many as we can in the time we've got. So Lily, uh, if, if you can help us understand kind of what are the common themes or questions that are coming sure. through from the audience. Sure, 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 and I and I and I love the the human solidarity point. So so thanks for 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 ending on that in your in your conversation, Joanne. Um, so the the first one um, is is around the vote Miami and mm -hmm. and how can one in our community um, leverage vote Miami to activate their community to the polls? That's a great question. Um, so for, for those of you in Florida that are watching, mm -hmm. yesterday was the last day to register. So unfortunately, you cannot do that if you're in Florida. But if you are in other coasts, um, please find out about that and register. Uh, but then there are two ways in which you could leverage Vote Miami. Mm -hmm. One is to learn as many things as you can. So in the website, you will find links to voter guides, uh, to... Um, I would say like as many resources as you can that are being built in the community for you to learn about the candidates. Mm -hmm. But the most important tool that people could leverage uh, is, is a ballot ready widget that we have there. So once mm -hmm. you enter your address, it filters the information for you based on your party and your address. And it tells you who could you vote for? How can you learn about these candidates and actually prepare your ballot, print it or mail it wow. your way so that you can understand uh, and make the elections in an informed way, right? That's what we're looking for. Yeah. And the third one is if you can vote or not, like myself, you can mobilize your people. So in the Vote Miami website, you will have images and resources that we want you to download and make your own post, share, call, text, whatever you can do to mobilize your people. That's definitely the most effective thing you can do. And that's so incredibly valuable because what we're finding in, in, in communities across the country, and including in Miami, um, with local news decreasing, with legacy media decreasing, there's really a gap in, in this information um, around who to vote for. Of course, you, you probably have in your mind who you, who you want to vote for for president, but for judges or for, for other you know, um, uh, officials that are on the ballot. So that's, that's incredibly va um, valuable. Um, uh, for a voter. Um, one of the things, Joanne, that I really liked, and, and there was a question around this, um, is around kind of issues and, mm -hmm. um, and kind of linking what, um, what you care about to, to understanding the vote. And so let me, let me be a little bit more clear. So, so when, when you go to Vote Miami, there, there are questions like, do you care about mobility? Do you care about parks? And, and it's making that link that the things that, that we have around us um, are there because of 
our local officials. Um, but one of the things that we found in, in Miami and across the country is that for many young people who actually value their parks or transit or, you know, are not showing up to vote. Um, and so tell me, I want to dig a little bit deeper, you know, how does Vote Miami make that clear around kind of the, the issues that that you might care about, whether it's like mobility or walkability and, and really getting to um, the ballot and, and, and voting? Mm -hmm. um, that, that's a great question. And I, and I laugh, right? Because when I moved to Miami four, four yeah. years ago and they told me, oh, there are 30, 30 plus mayors and then there's another mayor. Yeah. You're like, wait, wh what is this structure and where can I learn from it? <laughs> the reality is that there was no real one place where I could understand that structure. Yeah. Uh, so Vote Miami has the Government 101 page. And it's basically going back to your, to your school and, and doing that civic education back again. And it tells you from the federal level to the local le uh, level, who are these representatives and what are they doing? What's yeah. their job, right? What, what are they deciding for us? Um, so that's definitely a way in which people can not only understand the structure, uh, but try to take that local and up approach, right? Like yeah. if you don't really care about the precedent or, or the national level stuff, you care about the whole in your street, you will understand mm. who's that person in yeah. charge of that. Um, so that's definitely one. And, and then the other way is we ourselves don't, don't really endorse or, or promote any candidates. But right. when you use that ballot ready tool that I'm telling you about, that's in, in Spanish, Creole and, and Portuguese as well. Um, when you look at the candidates, you could look for endorsements based on the issues that you care about. So there are definitely tags and filters that you could use if it's transportation. You click on transportation and it will tell you what the candidates have been saying. Oh, about fantastic. What they care about. Fantastic. I mean, that is, that's incredibly valuable um, to be able to make that link to like, these are the things that impact your life, right? Um, and, and making that link to the, the, the local official that that's, that's great. Um, and so, so Roel and you talked a little bit about disinformation and, mm -hmm. and how that is a major pain point um, and, and across the country and our community. Um, and, and, and I would also, uh, um, there's a major pain point is around trust. So there's a couple of questions around disinformation and trust. Um, and, and there's fear actually, you know, there is fear um, in our community around whether it's the census or, or, um, or voting or there, there's fear that there could be chaos. Um, so, so can you, can you talk a little bit about how um, we as, as community leaders can support our community and, um, and, you know, um, staying calm and, um, you know, getting out the information, but then also empowering folks to feel comfortable to, to vote. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so I think it, it's okay not to stay calm, right? In yeah. terms of okay. like some of the things are alarming, right? Like some yeah. of the things one reads, you're like, why is this out there and how can this be true? Mm -hmm. um, but then what you do with that sentiment, I think is what matters. Mm. Um, so I, I would suggest two things and, and that's kind of like the approach that we take. One is if there's a community and certain fears that are around that you just want to bring more information to them, I would say if you're not close to that, that community, don't do it yourself. Mm. Find leaders and find organizations that are already doing that work Mm -hmm. uh, and have a conversation with them. What is this happening? How can I help you, et cetera, for them to be the ones that deliver the message because that's definitely important when it comes to trust. And the second thing is we just have to then fight that information with positive things, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the reality is that unfortunately, the, econ the economy and the, the financial bets are on the Coca-Cola ads of the world and the partisan ads of the world. So if we can come together and just fight that negative noise with positive noise on social, because that's where people are, mm -hmm. uh, we, we just got to do it and we just got to try. Um, there's there's a, an article I once read that said, the bad people win because they're noisy, mm. because they're loud. Uh, so how can we, the good people that are not really pushing for anything, but just to bring power back to the people, uh, be as loud and as noisy as we can. Mm, that's for, really powerful. That is really for, powerful. Jo uh, Roll, do you want to jump in here? Yeah, I, I just want to, first of all, plus one kudos to that. And I wanted mm -hmm. to add that just before we came on, about a few, a few minutes before we came on live on the show, uh, Florida Secretary of State did reopen 
uh, voter registration until 7 p.m. tonight because of the technical difficulties on the voter registration website yesterday. So if you're listening live or you're listening uh, at some point uh, today, October 6th uh, in Florida and you want to register to vote and you haven't yet, you have until 7 p.m. today uh, to do so. Yeah, I saw that, that there was some technical, I, I literally, it was like one minute before that there's technical issues. So, that, so thank you for the, the live update um, around that. Um, we got a breaking news show here. Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. We have seven um, hours to go then. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that, that's great that there's a, that there's a bit more time. Um, and on that note, um, Joanne, I would love to invite you to, to end on any final thoughts that you have around um, voter engagement um, and, and Miami civic engagement and just um, that, that you want to leave with our audience. I have so many things to say, but but I think for those of you who can vote, just register if you haven't. You can make decisions in this next three weeks and figure it out. Um, in a country like the United States, I think your voice matters more than in others where, where maybe voting cannot be safe or, or feel as hopeful as it does here. So mm -hmm. leverage that right and use your right. And for those of you who cannot, cannot vote uh, and live in the US, there's something for you to do, right? Learn who these people are, talk to your people, have these conversations with respect and love. It's enough about saying like, oh, let's not talk about politics. Yes, let's yes. do talk about politics because that's literally what's shaping our context. Um, and we can hold people accountable, right? So voting and, and civic engagement does not stop on November 3rd. It actually right. starts. Um, so so let's, ju let's just think of civic engagement about understanding the issues that affect your city, caring about them, and acting in the way that you can act according to your, to your needs and wants and, and possibilities in mm. moments like this. Understand, understanding, caring, and acting. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Joanne uh, Raul. Thank you for co-hosting. Um, we also um, are, we film this in Spanish and in Creole. Um, so for um, our various audience, our diverse audience in Miami and across the country, you can listen in, in multiple languages, which I think is incredibly important for this really, really um, timely, um, critical topic um, uh, around civic engagement. So thank you again, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Take care. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Sure, folks. Thanks, Joanne. Mm -hmm.